Hi dear students here professor Anil G Darekar Dear students in the last lecture we have seen percent determination of nitrogen now here we are going to discuss percent determination of sulfur now how to determine percent sulfur what is the principle behind it dear student just recall bomb calorimeter that we have seen so bomb calorimeter experiment we have to perform for finding determination of sulfur okay which experiment we have to carry out bomb calorimeter for finding percent sulfur first we will see principle then we will proceed toward the method that is what the determination dear students you know coal contain a sulfur so sulfur in coal first convert into sulfur trioxide how as you know burning of coal take place in presence of oxygen so coal contains sulfur so sulfur react with oxygen and it produce sulfur trioxide now produced sulfur trioxide dissolved in water now you will think how this so3 dissolved in water how let me tell you there is a distilled water in the bomb pot in the bomb pot there is a 10 ml distilled water so 10 ml distilled water especially we placed for dissolving produced gases in the bomb pot so produced gas dissolved in the distilled water and after dissolution it produce h2so4 what getting produced h2so4 getting produced in the bomb pot okay then take the washing of a bomb pot that washing we have to treat with the barium chloride barium chloride that is what bacl2 treat with barium chloride bacl2 what we have to treat we have to treat the washing of the bomb pot means what we have to take out bomb pot from the calorimeter we have to remove the lead whatever liquid is there at the bottom of bomb pot we have to take it in the beaker and in the beaker we have to add bacl2 so bacl2 react with h2so4 and it produce precipitate of a barium sulfate barium sulfate precipitate getting produced after reaction between h2so4 and bacl2 now we will see the reaction reaction so here name of the method is iska method right that is what the bomb calorimeter experiment as i said sulfur is there in the coal sample what is the weight 32 the way we have seen in case of carbon 12 hydrogen 2 nitrogen 14 likewise sulfur weight is 32 that is what present in coal sample so that sulfur react with the oxygen as we provide oxygen for burning of coal so sulfur react with o2 it produce sulfur dioxide it again react with oxygen it produce sulfur trioxide now produced sulfur trioxide gas inside the bomb pot dissolved in distilled water present inside the bomb pot so it produce h2so4 now this h2so4 from bomb pot we are taking out and we are keeping in the beaker and in that beaker what we are adding BaCl2 so H2SO4 react with BaCl2 it produces precipitate of a barium sulfate and its weight is 233 right and here by product is HCl so separate ppt from HCl simply by filtering by filtration so after filtration you can remove HCl right and uh, the produced ppt you have to dry and after drying you have to take wet wet of barium sulfate now dear students if you see the barium sulfate then sulfur in the barium sulfate that sulfur came from coal so wet of barium sulfate is important for finding percentage of sulfur so formula for percent sulfur is wet of barium sulfate ppt divided by wet of coal sample multiply by 32 divide by 233 multiply by 100 why 32 here we are taking because we have to find sulfur so molecular weight of sulfur is 32 divide by 233 why 233 because the produced product 
is a barium sulfate and its molecular weight is 233 and in barium sulfate the sulfur is there that sulfur came from coal so formula is a very simple that is what weight of a barium sulfate ppt divided by weight of coal sample multiply by 32 divided by 233 233 multiply by 100 so by using this formula you can find percent sulfur the the time when you compare percent sulfur with carbon with hydrogen with nitrogen you will find similarity what similarity you will find hydrogen 2 divided by 18 carbon 12 divided by 44 nitrogen 14 divided by 1000 and now sulfur 32 divided by 233 now after this determination of ash dear students for determination of ash we have to follow the proximate analysis method what we did in proximate analysis same way we have to carry out experiment for finding ash that is what keep it in muffle furnace without lid temperature 750 timing 30 minutes after 30 minutes cool in desiccator and take the weight so whatever residue left behind that is what ash itself so weight of ash divided by weight of the coal sample multiply by 100 will give you percent ash and last one determination of oxygen how to determine percent oxygen the way we found out percent fixed carbon same way you can find percent oxygen that is what percent oxygen 100 minus percentage of carbon percentage of hydrogen percentage of nitrogen percentage of sulfur and percentage of ash okay so 100 minus percentage of all these will give you percent oxygen so dear students this is what the complete ultimate analysis now we will see the significance of ultimate analysis as you know very well carbon is the actual burning part of the coal or any fuel so higher percentage of carbon higher will be the calorific value now what about importance of hydrogen and oxygen dear students hydrogen and oxygen present in the form of moisture hydrogen oxygen present in the form of moisture means what moisture means h2o vapor now h2o moisture moisture h2o so hydrogen is there oxygen is there and you know moisture decreases the calorific value because it decreases it decreases thermal efficiency it increases ignition point okay so lesser the percentage of hydrogen and oxygen better is the quality of coal so there is no importance of hydrogen and oxygen so less percentage better the quality of coal now percent nitrogen what is the importance of nitrogen see nitrogen is a inert you know and it does not burn so it does not burn so nitrogen is not involved in the production of heat so nitrogen having no calorific value sulfur sulfur actually increases the calorific value of coal sulfur increases calorific value of coal but it causes so2 pollution how so2 pollution that so2 during a rainy season produced so2 react with h2o and it produce h2so4 so produced h2so4 responsible for acid rain the way we have seen in bomb pot produced sulfur oxide react with distilled water and it produce h2so4 likewise H so2 in the atmosphere react with rain water and it produce h2so4 and it lead to acid rain and you know produced acid inside the bomb pot inside the bomb pot bomb pot is made by using a stainless steel and acid is a highly reactive toward the metal so acid react with the metal and it lead to the corrosion right so if equipment start corroding then it will not work properly okay so it will be better if there is a no sulfur in the coal so no sulfur best quality best will be the quality of coal and last one ash you know very well ash is a non combustible matter and ash decreases the calorific value so it will be better if non combustible matter is not there in the coal okay so out of all only carbon is important because carbon percentage 
increases the calorific value and a rest all decreases the calorific value so this is what the ultimate analysis hope you understand thank you thank you for watching